Washakie was born around 1810 in a flathead village in Montana to a Shoshone mother and a flathead father. He became a member of the Shoshone tribe at 16, joining a band of Shoshone whose territory included the Green River and Bear River regions. Hunting, trapping, and trading in the greater Jackson Hole area, Washakie became fast friends with Jim Bridger, a relationship that started him on the path of becoming an important liaison between the Shoshone and incoming Western immigrants. During his late teens and twenties, Washakie's success as a trapper and trader, and also as a warrior participating in raids against the Blackfeet in Montana, gained him popularity and support by both his tribal cohort and by local white government officials. His ability to negotiate on behalf of his people, securing supplies, food, and gifts from Indian agents, in exchange for advocating peaceful relations between newly arriving settlers and Shoshone peoples, quickly elevated him to a position of greater power. The arrival of large numbers of settlers to the area meant the constriction of not only the Shoshone tribe's hunting territory, but also that of their enemies. More and more frequently, the Shoshone were forced to hunt within Crow, Cheyenne, Sioux, and Arapaho territories. Traditional tribal social structures were impacted as well. Shoshone, who usually moved across the land in smaller groups, between 10 to 100 people usually, were living in larger numbers, sometimes numbering 1 to 2,000, as there was less room to live dispersed across the landscape. Washakie sought to obtain permanent lands for the Shoshone and approached Brigham Young about a treaty in 1852, but was unsuccessful. Finally, in 1868, the Fort Bridger Treaty was signed, creating the Wind River Reservation. But signing the treaty also meant changes to their way of life. The agreement to live in permanent houses, send tribal children to school, and rely on farming for subsistence. Chief Washakie strove to balance adapting to new ways and technologies while also preserving traditional Shoshone ways and rights as farmers and ranchers occupied the land around them and the buffalo in the region completely disappeared. When Washakie died in 1900, he was given a full military funeral and his funeral train stretched for miles, marking the end of an incredible era for both the man and his tribe.